Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Bartos Farchek. Bartos, how are we doing, buddy? Yeah, see, we, <laughs> we were working on the name earlier, and I'm really excited. Oh, that was good. That this was good. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Gabriel. I'm re I, I really enjoyed being here. Good to no, see you. I'm, I'm excited because this is a very interesting uh, entrepreneur. Obviously, this he has a, he has an accent, so he's not here from the States. But what he does actually affects everyone across the country because my myself, I'm, I love entertainment. I love gaming. But before we get into G2A, Bartos, introduce yourself. Give us a little background. Thank you very much. I was born in Poland. In uh, in late eighties, I can say so, very post-communism Soviet country, and from the from New Sądz, you cannot mistake it with New York, uh, a rather small city. Uh, then educational path in uh, in Poland, then my first company uh, in very different industry where I am right now. So now it's e-commerce, but before it was steel construction, so very heavy business, and. Um, and then I was living for a couple of years, for seven or eight, to be exact, uh, in Amsterdam, in Boston, in Berlin, in Marbella, uh, in Spain, and now back to Poland again. So I feel being very cosmopolitan, I can say. Um, and that came before the very good start. A, a true global citizen, just kind of cruising around the entire world. Now, now, now as I mentioned, you are the, the founder of G2A. So first, explain what G2A is and tell us a little bit about how you got into this. G2A.com is the world's largest, actually, and most trusted, as they say, marketplace for digital entertainment. Uh, so we have two-sided business model, like eBay for digital items uh, being being brief 30 million people 180 countries where we operate uh, over 100 million items sold so that's the scale of the business uh, the united states is the largest market for us um, and you have the selection of 75,000 different titles so literally if you would like to play the game probably we have it uh, if that is on console, on, on, on PC, etc. And also G2A leads in online security. Uh, we've been awarded several times for being on the top of the game when it comes to cybersecurity. And a couple of times also name the marketplace of the year or the best B2C marketplace. Uh, in one of the countries uh, in Europe, very soon in 20 days, uh, we will receive uh, the award for the for the best marketplace, but it's unofficial yet, so we have to wait two weeks. Oh, I love it! So that's something you'll probably see on the newsletter. So, a quick plug: visit theshadesofe.com to go ahead and subscribe to that newsletter. Now, go ahead and give us a little background. Why did you start? How did you start this? You, you bas it's basically an online marketplace, right, for digital and entertainment. Uh, it's games, and is there also movies on there? Is, is there just primarily games? Primarily games, but you can buy a, a gift card or subscription for Netflix uh, or Amazon or Prime or probably whatever gift card you can think of. So partially, yes. So what do we do? You can think of it like G2A states for gate to adventure. So we, ba we basically open the gate to digital adventure for our clients. And we base on two as we call it in marketing, on two archetypes. One is, um, is adventurer. So it needs to be interesting, exciting. It needs to be new, uh, and it is. And on the other side, caregiver. So basically what we are saying is, hey, we've been here for almost 15 years. We really know the industry, the digital space. So let us guide you through this to choose the best item or product or the way of you would like to spend your time and we will take care about you about your payments about uh, your customer experience etc so this is what we stands for now how did, let's let's 
take a step back. Is this your first entrepreneurial endeavor or have you kind of jumped into this pool of entrepreneurship before? No, it's not the first one. It's not my first rodeo, as, as we like to say. <laughs> uh, I started very early, uh, you know, in my high school. Uh, even earlier, in my primary school, I was I was cleaning cars for money. Uh, in my high school, I was a tennis trainer, and I was stringing the tennis rackets and and etc. And then at the university, at the second year year of my university, I started my entrepreneurial path. Uh, so I started working in insurance company and I was knocking the door, selling the life insurances uh, and building the sales structure. Uh, so that was the very beginning. And then at the last year of my university, I set up my first company. It was steel construction. And within five years, uh, we brought the company from zero to being top 20 uh, industry uh, leaders in Poland. Now, when it comes to steel industry, including steel mills, also the biggest one, like Lakshmi Mito uh, from India, etc. So that was a big success. Then uh, then there was a failure because I lost my business. I, I think I can say I wasn't smart enough to protect it. And I was, I was misled. I was basically somebody... Uh, have stolen from me a lot of money and materials, never got back, go, went bankrupt. And, and that went in in parallel with with financial crisis. And I was forced to 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 give away my business, to sold it and and I landed on the very bottom. And then I started another business that was logistics. And from this moment, uh, I also was doing consulting, so mentoring, coaching, etc. Uh, and one day, I got an email. An email was, hello, Mr. Bartosz, my name is David. I am 18 years old. Could you be my mentor? And I didn't answer. <laughs> so that was the first moment when G2A could not happen. Uh, but the second day, I got a very long explanation why I should uh, become a mentor of, uh, of my future business partner. And this is how it all started. They, I mentored David for six months. And then... We shaked hands and then we started something called Go to Arena. That was the first name of the business because we didn't have money for the three letter domain, which is very sexy, G2A. It's easy to remember, etc. But at that time, it was too expensive for us. So we started small, we started very humble. Uh, six people, one room, low cost. That was the beginnings. Man, and it's kind of interesting because, you know, one of the things you mentioned was mentorships. Uh, you, you know, you you were hesitant to take on it, but then you did. You you brought on a new mentor. How did that help you grow as a professional business into the entrepreneurial world, becoming a mentor? In my opinion, mentoring, being mentor and mentee, is fundamental when you think about entrepreneurship. Because when you are a mentor, that is probably the best way to learn things. Because when you are teaching other people, sharing, then you are also learning. And being a mentee never ends. Today, I, I finished two universities. I studied at MIT, at Harvard, some programs, etc. I read over 1,000 books. And I still have this feeling that I am so small when it comes to, to the knowledge that I can get. And also today I have my mentors. So today I am both mentor and mentee. And in my opinion, if you want to be successful entrepreneur, you have to be humble when it comes to your ego, when it comes to, to your appetite and, um, and the way you think about yourself. So it's good to have big appetite, but it is also important to remember that there is always a bigger guy than you. There is always a bigger company than you and that your ego should be under control. Even though you are very successful, you should really take care about being down to earth. 
you know, having, you know, being humble, you mentioned, you know, being humble and being down to earth. Uh, and you also mentioned with your steel company during the financial crisis around 2008, right? Uh, how did you remain, you know, humble during such a testing time in your life? And how did you kind of have the willpower to continue to move on with your entrepreneurial journey? It was definitely one of the most difficult periods of my life because when the company is successful, the life is maybe not easy because it is always pushing and pushing and wanting more and hard work. Of course, it depends on your on your leadership style. There are many different leadership styles. My was mine was always leading by example. Mine was always very hardworking. Nobody never gave me anything. And every penny I earned, every dollar, every euro, uh, I had to earn it. And I believe in hard work, basically. Um, and going back to the financial crisis, this humbleness, uh, I can give you an example. When your company is in trouble, and you are in debt, and a lot of people want to talk to you and ask, hey, where would I get my money? And then you have the choice. You can answer the phone or you can not answer it. And of course, sometimes it seems to be easier not answering them. But in my opinion, it's not the good way. It's not a good approach. It's not the long-term approach. So what I was doing always when my company was down, because as a businessman, you will always have ups and downs. And with every business, you have to remember that, that there will be ups and downs. There is never going like skyrocketing all the time. And I was basically answering every phone in the most difficult time period. It was Imagine having, I did the statistics, 156 phones per day. People asking, hey, what's going on? Where is my money? How can I get it? Where will you pay me, etc." And I was answering every phone and I was addressing every case the way I could. I was saying, hey, not tomorrow, uh, day after. Or I was saying, okay, I cannot give you the money, but I have some material so you can buy it from me in a good price and then we will be settled or, 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 but always I was trying in these difficult moments to be there because the worst thing you can do is stop answering your phone and just, you know, disappear. Uh, because market is small. Uh, even though the world is big, at the end of the day, it's not so big. People know people and, um, I can say today very openly, you can go to anybody I was working in my life for the last over 20 years and ask about me and you will hear a good testimonial. Um, and some people don't see that. Yeah, In those difficult moments, some people think that they can hide or disappear and, and it never works well. You know, from from that moment, you you decided, okay, this failed, still failed, but you took a lot of those lessons, and then you yeah. started a logistics business. How did how did that transition occur? I went from, you know, when I when I when I finished this time of my of my of my business endeavor. I, I took a lot of hits and it was a very difficult moment for me. I was on the very bottom and, and there is something which is, I think, human nature. And human nature is being built much earlier. Of course, we've been developing ourselves the whole life, but the way you are constructed during your kindergarten, primary school, secondary school, university, it's super important because then you are learned about work ethic, about your values, about you rather prefer to be a honest person or maybe trying to cheat somebody. And 
it always is reflected during your later stages. So sometimes when I see the parents that are not taking care about the, their, their children, when it comes to values, when it comes to the discipline, when it comes to the, the behavior, I know that those children would, would have uh, a lot of problems in their adult life uh, because they will not be on the good path uh, with, the, with the DNA they have imprinted. Um, and in my case, when I finished my first business, my entrepreneurial nature was like, okay, what can I do now? And I was, I was, um, I did the license, uh, for, for logistics and I started again, very small. Uh, and at the same time, even bigger part of my, of my activities was coaching. So I had my uh, my webpage. I had people that were asking me for advice, and I started by recommendation. So people were saying to another people, "Hey, this guy, he knows what he talks about." And and within the next three years, I had a really good life uh, when it comes to the to the level of of business of of I could maintain myself really well. So from that, you know, it's, I think there's a, a few things I want to kind of pull out there, folks. Um, one, I, I completely agree in creating structure when you're, you know, I have two young girls, I have a, I have a four-year-old and a, a one-year-old. And for me, creating structure, even around their nap times is extremely important. We're very structured in our day. Uh, believe it or not, I wake up about 4.35 a.m. every day, every day. Uh, and that's, and then my kids are about seven in the morning every day. They get up, they eat breakfast first thing in the morning. And then every day their nap is like 1230 to 230 every day. Uh, they go to bed at 730 at night every day. You know, this is, it's very structured. Um, and the reason for that, it, it kind of creates, you know, I, I talked about this earlier. You know, one of the things I do is I wake up every day and make my bed. Uh, and it's because it, it just, it creates structure in your life uh, to help you kind of succeed. Every time I make my bed in the day, I think of like, okay, that's one thing I've accomplished already. I'm off to a good start, you know, and then I'll take a couple of, you know, 30 minutes to do some duolingual, another 30 minutes to get on the exercise, do some core exercise, get on the Peloton, right? And then eight hours or nine hours of straight work, you know, and then I got a couple hours left to still spend with time with the family, but it's structuring your day to be as efficient as possible is, is you know, what Abartos is really kind of getting to is just kind of creating structure around your day uh, and, and over your kid's day because it's going to make them successful as well. And I completely agree, you know, um, having that structure is is so important. Now you went, I, I still in logistics, I can see the, the, the similarities, right? And then you get a call from a mentee saying, hey, I'm, I, I got an idea, right? It's, it's completely different than still in logistics. I'd yeah. Talk about that. <laughs> um, what you described uh, in, in, in the words of structure, I call it the rhythm, just being with this, with this topic for us for a, for a second. And this rhythm is giving you the, the driving power. The more rhythmic you are in your life, the easier it is to do. So when I do cold bath every morning, the first is terrible. The fifth is okay. The tenth, I'm craving for it. I'm waiting for it. Even though it's painful because the water is so cold, it can be four degrees of the Celsius, as we say in Europe. Uh, but it is something my body get used to. And that is the structure that you describe, and that is the rhythm that I that I that I talk about. And it is absolutely crucial. So I fully agree that resonates with me very much. And now going back to this, um, there is something needed in entrepreneurial life, which is courage. And when I was starting my first business, I knew nothing about steel industry. I just get a proposition. Hey, Bartosz, maybe you would like to start with me a company. 100 kilometers from your city, you have to go there by train, 
and then you work from early morning till late night and then you go back and day after day we will build a business together and i said what kind of business steel industry okay let's go i knew nothing about it and then the pattern was exactly the same so my mentee he told me hey bartosz maybe we should start the company together and i said oh no another guy <laughs> because <laughs> When you are a mentor, you hear it quite often. Um, and I, I, I ask, hey, what kind of the business? Computer games. And I said, huh, I think computer games are for kids. <laughs> which, <laughs> which actually is very far from the truth. Yeah, the average player is 35. And, and I did my research. And it turned out that gaming industry is larger then movie and music combined. And I said, oh, wow, it sounds promising. And we had a simple conversation. And I said, e-commerce, okay, let's do it. And that was it. There was not, not huge, huge uh, research uh, for that. It was just the beginning. I knew where I am very good at. And I knew where my business partner is really good at. And I could see that the combination of both is a good start for, for a promising company. And that was the beginning. Um, very simple. You know, you also brought up a good point. I think um, when you when you create a business and you work with mentors and mentees, uh, identifying your strengths with a business partner and identifying your business partner strengths is very important because they need to be complementary, right? They need to kind of help support each other. So with that said, what, what are you more of the strategy? Are you the more of the marketing or the sales? What, what area are you kind of all of it? What is, what was your kind of core competency? My core competence was always human. So I am a human guy. I am, my, my university was about human resources and my first job um, in insurance company was with people. I was building the structures of people for sale. Uh, and from that moment of time, I was always very close to people. So my core competence is that I am a human person, that I am somebody who is who can at, bring the talent who can navigate manage lead as as i know after 20 years from the feedback that i get and i am very feedback person so you can always expect from me uh the questions like hey what do you think what was that the meeting what do you think about what i said what do you think what do you think what do you think because i like to learn and i like the cycle of learning. So that is my first competence. The second one is I think I am a driver. I mean, I like to be responsible. And that goes hand in hand with, with being the owner, not of, only of business, but project, idea, something that you have to deliver from point A to point B. And if you want to build a business, you need to have it. You need to like to be responsible for things. And some people do, some people don't. And I agree very much with you that you really need to know where are the your core competences. So that would be the second one. And then the third one, I am the problem solver. So this is my attitude. So whatever the problem is, I'm always thinking, okay, what are the options? I almost never think, oh my God, another problem. No, I just assume that the problems never end. There will be always the next day with more problems. And every day I wake up in the morning and I know that this day is gonna bring some challenges. It's going to bring some things I have to do, which I don't know what to do at the beginning. And then my problem-solving attitude is I also share it with people. 
So I think that whenever you build a business, you have to be very aware what you are sharing with people, what kind of values you are sharing with people. And today I am super happy because my team is amazing. I've been building this team for 15 years. Some people are with me for more than 10 years. Some people just getting started. But we share the same values. We say we share the same attitude when it comes to trust, to honesty, to loyalty, to appetite for growth, to feedback. Um, and I think this is very, very important. Last word here. When I when I say people, I think about all ingredients. So people at the company is not only bringing talent but also taking care of it, taking care of who they are, where they go, what they want, what are the needs, what are the challenges they have in their life. It's not only about the business. Most of us spend more than eight hours during the day working. For me, it would be more like 12 hours, sometimes 14 hours. And I know that top of my people, they also work like hell. Sorry for this phrase, but it's basically the client language. And that means that you are sharing life, not only business, because a huge portion of their life is dedicated to the company you are building together. So you have to be with them. This is at least my approach. I really understand and respect that there are different leaders and they are they have different approaches. Mine is very human oriented. Yeah, you know, it's it's very true too. Um, I think some entrepreneurs that are in the corporate world struggle a lot of the times because they understand that their ideas, thoughts, and problem solving skills are actually helping to support build a different business and not their own. Uh, and so I think a lot of the times those individuals tend to struggle. Now, I also, you know, I've, I've mentioned this before in other shows is I, I, I believe there's like three different types of employees, right? There's the engaged employee, right? Which you're kind of talking about the person that they're going to work, they work like hell. They're going to work their ass off. They're going to get stuff done and they're going to really, you know, help propel the business forward. Uh, then there's the RIP employees, the retired in place. Right. They come, they kind of just do the bare minimum. They, they get their eight hours in, they go home. They're not going to work that 12, 13, 14 hour day. And then you have the cave employees. They're constantly against virtually everything. Right. And those are the difficult employees because I can get an RIP employee engaged to what we're doing, but I can't get an individual that is constantly against virtually everything about my business to believe in the business. And at some point, uh, even though I know it's extremely difficult to find staff, sometimes it's it's important to let those individuals go because it's those individuals that are going to be the ones training your new employees. And they're going to be training them with their attitude, with their uh, disapproval of the lunch, with disapproval of parking, with how the software works, with having to, having to work eight hours, you know? And so um, culture each strategy for breakfast any day of the week. And, and so it's so important to have the right people on the bus to make sure your, your journey is going to be successful. Now, Bartos, one of the things you mentioned as well was you like to give advice. What are some, and you like to ask questions, you know, you've been doing this for 20, 30 years. What are some questions entrepreneurs, especially new aspiring folks that maybe are kind of spinning in circles around a thought or an idea, what questions should they be asking themselves to continue to push their business uh, or, or entrepreneurial journey forward? Great question. Great question, Gabriel. I think few. One, what is the cost you can pay for being successful? And the second, in connection, what is your definition of success? Because everybody has a different one. So the second question is about your goal, about where you are going. Do you really know what you want? And that is extremely difficult to say sometimes, but it's very fundamental. Because this question is the answer about your motivation. 
And the funny thing is that when I read the first 100 books, I saw so many parts of the books, of, of these books about, about goals. And I was like, goals, goals, and other goals. And then another 100 books, another 100, and everybody was referring to that. And then finally, after several years, I understood that this so simple thing, it's so obvious, like, like okay, what can be more obvious about doing business than having clearly, precisely written down goals? Yeah, but 95% people don't have it. So that is the first thing. The second, the first was the cost. And why the cost is important? Because being entrepreneur is difficult. This is very difficult job. In my opinion, one of the most difficult jobs in the world. Very lonely job because you are at the, on, the, on the top of your business, competitive with so many others. If you don't have a good network, if you don't have your mentor, your partner, etc., it's tough because you are alone. And you have to build this network to help you. And the cost, the question about the cost is how much you can you can pay for getting to your goals. How many hours working? How many meetings with your friends, which are not gonna happen? How many things that you have to devote to get where you want to be? If you, will, if you answer this question about the cost, then it will be much easier every day, wake up in the morning full of power and move forward. On the other hand, if you don't do that, then you are waking up next day and saying, oh no, another suffering. Oh no, again, I have to devote something. I have to, I have to do something I maybe would rather not do, blah, blah, blah. And those two things, the goal where you are heading and the cost that you are willing to pay are the first two questions. And then there is another one about what can you do better? Very simple question, but so deep because the question, what can you do better is about how much you can change yourself, how much you can adapt to the reality that you have to face, how much you can learn and grow to get where you want to be. So the question is, are you ready to change for the next 10, 20, 30 years constantly? I am changing constantly, trying to evolve, to adapt to the market, to the challenges, to the people I work with. What stays in place are values, but the behaviors, the way you act, you have to adapt it because the world is changing so fast. So with those three questions, I would start. Yeah, and you know, I will, folks, I'll give you a great example of, of those three questions. Uh, this podcast, um, been doing it for about three years now. Definitely been some days like, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. It's it's taking a bunch of time. I'm not making a revenue. Uh, you know, you're building this brand. You're trying to build your sales funnels and, and you know, all these things, right? Um and you know, year two comes. I'm like, you know, I'm. I, what else? To you, to your point, what 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 do I want to spend to be successful? What do I want to learn? So then I started learning about um, SEO uh, and realizing, you know, I should probably diversify my audience by putting my podcast on YouTube, right? Putting the the videos on. Um, again, year three comes. I'm like, yeah, I'm still not, you know, not sure. Just starting to barely turn the revenue, not enough to pay me enough to, uh, you know, make the podcast continue to go. And then the other day I get, you know, a couple of weeks ago, one of my latest podcast episodes gets about 20,000 views on YouTube, you know, and then you start, I start to think, Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I'm starting to gain traction, but it, yeah. it took three years to get here. And it took, if you go back to my earlier episodes, it, 
a lot of learning. I, I got better. You know, Bartos mentioned, you mentioned with the steel industry, um, you didn't succeed in that moment, but I guarantee the amount of things you learn through that process has made you successful today. Yes, very much. I would add one thing on the top of those things mentioned. Can you deliver? That is the question that, that also entrepreneurs should ask themselves. Can you deliver? Because at the end of the day, it is all about. Can you move something from point A to point B? Means can you deliver something from point A to point B? And I can give you an example from G2A, which we had. Cybersecurity. It's a challenge, of course. Everybody knows that, yeah? Especially on e-commerce business, especially when the market is more and more um, not only bigger, but advanced when it comes to technology, to artificial intelligence that people use on both sides for cybersecurity, but, but also the bad actors. And for many years in the past, we had the challenge to being perceived as a cybersecurity great company. Even though inside the business, all the statistics were good, even though we were spending a lot of money and dedication to do that, then we were still fighting with this concept that, that sticked with us several years earlier when we were a smaller company. And at the end of the day, you have the question, can you deliver this to the higher level? So we took the massive work and focus to not only working with the top companies in the world, to bringing the best talents, to being eventually rewarded as one of the most secure companies on e-commerce business. But there were ups and downs. There were so many hesitations. There, were, there was time and you had to push it day in, day out, 365 per year. Uh, and it's not going to happen within one year. So you have to be ready to deliver things over two, three, four times, four years time period, which is difficult because you are pushing something and you don't see the result like tomorrow. You have to be aware that, okay, it's going to take two more years and you are just pushing and pushing and pushing. And without this, don't start without this mental attitude that you can feel it, that you can deliver. Don't start it because you will be suffering. But if you have it, go for it because there is always a way. If you have this feeling that you can be entrepreneur and you believe it, go for it. If you have the openness for change, for learning, for being better tomorrow than you are today, then go for it because entrepreneurial life is the most beautiful life when it comes to business, when you do it in a proper way. You know, I will say this about entrepreneurship, at least my experience with it. It reminds me of riding a skateboard. You know, when I first started riding the skateboard, uh, I fell a lot, got a lot of scrapes and bruises. Um, but the goal with skateboarding is you got to continue to push the board in order for it to go forward, right? The board's not going to go forward unless you physically are pushing it forward. And then eventually you kind of get to this spot where you're like, you know what? I can do this now. I can do it on a long board, right? Now you're kind of moving up a little bit. And now on the long board, you could probably all seen that, that one, you know, video of the gentleman on the long board, drinking that juice going down. That's what entrepreneurship eventually feels like. It, it's a lot of scrapes and bruises. It's a lot of having to continue to push the board forward, but it's those moments of, of gliding, just being there. Those are the moments we live for, right? As an entrepreneur, because when everything comes together, when all of your learnings and all those scrapes and bruises finally come together and you're able to land that 1080 like Tony Hawk did, that is when like you finally feel a bit of accomplishment. But as an entrepreneur, you'll truly never feel done with your work. You, you, you truly never are. 
Now, with that said, what's the what's the next year or two look like for you? What's it what's it look like for G2A? Opening the gate to digital adventure, <laughs> which means for us, um, one, that we are changing ourselves from being only a gaming company. So only being only focused with games, console games, computer games, video games, to becoming very all digital company. So this year we're gonna be around 25, 20, 25% of other than gaming um, items, offerings, uh, revenues. And then next and next or year after year, we are we are heading towards 50%. So that's the first thing. The second, being focused on some very important markets for us, the United States, Spain, next is Germany, uh, and a couple others. So being very locally presented, locally with people, locally with events, locally with activities, supporting the local communities in the meaning of gamers and the people that are looking for digital entertainment. So that's the second thing. The third one, um, we are the largest marketplace when it comes to digital offerings, digital items in the world. At the same time, uh, we want to be much bigger because the scale is giving you the possibilities. Uh, so when you look at our roadmap, how many features, new features we want to deliver to our clients, you will see over 150 different features that we are working on, on wow. our road. So you will see a lot of, a lot of improvements on our platform, and you will see a lot of new developments for our clients. And you can ask myself, hey, so why you are doing this? And there we go back to this appetite, to this appetite for growth, to this idea that you are pushing the envelope, that you are moving the needle, going one step forward, one step forward, one step forward. And I think it never ends. I think it's related to human nature. I think it's related to who we are. And and in my opinion, that's a beauty of being entrepreneur. Yes, yes, it, it truly is. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an ever learning uh, curve with an entrepreneurship because just once you think you uh, know everything, the world will throw a pandemic in your face to just so you can learn a little bit more. Bartos, thank you so much for joining the show. I really do appreciate it. For folks, again, if you want to learn more information, check out the newsletter at theshadesofe.com. Please subscribe to the newsletter and we will have this information. Again, that's G, the let, the number 2A.com. This information will be on the newsletter uh, as well on the website at theshadesofe.com. So again, please check us out. Bartos, is there any last words you'd like to say to the listeners? One thing, don't remember to inspire others. I was blessed to meet a lot of leaders in my, at my early business days, and they inspired me a lot. So if you are an entrepreneur, starting entrepreneur or very mature and entrepreneur, inspire others because they will be growing thanks to you. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Thank you so much, folks. And again, uh, have a great day. Partos, thank you so much. All this information will be on the newsletter. So please subscribe. Thank you and have a great night.